All right, you guys have been working through these videos pretty steadily now. We've done four or five hands-on exercises, and you're probably wondering if it's going to lead to anything. Well, we're really building to the meat of the content now. I'm going to walk through the process of setting up our first cloud-based server using Amazon Web Server. So it's a, a multi-step process, as you might imagine. We're going to break it up into two major components. One is just to get the server up and running, and then we're going to uh, stop this video. And then in the next video, we're going to take the server that we've just started working with, and then we'll configure that so that you can understand how a, a web application server is um, configured and, and used. That'll take us into the process of using a Open EMR, which is an electronic health records product, which is very similar to this server this sort of generic server that we're building at this um, stage of the game. We're going to start using AWS's LightSail. It's called LightSail because who knows why. What happened was AWS launched its original EC2 product, which stands for Elastic Compute Cloud, and it was a little too technical. It required a lot of configuration and people didn't think it was that user friendly. So what Amazon did was they launched this companion product called LightSail, which is a simplified version of a cloud-based virtual server. And the hope was that it would help people get their cloud servers up and running a little bit easier. And then they would segue as they gain more competency and familiarity into the more robust EC2 product. So we're gonna go ahead and go to my AWS account, uh, my management console here. And we're going to go to LightSail, and that will bring up this page. You can see here it looks a little friendlier, and you can see I'm running um, one LightSail server right now that's been running in the background in Oregon for probably months now. And we're going to create a new one. So let's just go walk through that process. This is probably going to take 15 minutes, so fair warning, you might want to stop because you really can't watch this part of the video on 2x. So create instance, it tells you it's running in Oregon zone A, and it tells you uh, that there's gonna be a few steps. First, we'll pick our platform. We're gonna choose Linux slash Unix. You could do Windows, but that's a little bit outside of our scope for today. And it says, we'll pick a blueprint. So LightSales, remember, is trying to make it really easy. And Amazon knows that there's some certain technology stacks that have established themselves as industry standards. And it also knows that most people can't figure out how to configure these technology stacks without some help. And so it's going to use um, the technology stack as certified by this outside company called Bitnami. So Bitnami, um, what they do is they take a bare bones Linux server operating system that's fresh out of the box and they install all these uh, packages onto it so you don't have to do anything. And then they harden it. So for security purposes, it's not gonna be very easy to hack. Um, so they are automating this process and simplifying this process by potentially you know, hundreds of hours of time. So all we have to do here is we pick Linux Unix and we pick LAMP PHP 7. So LAMP stands for Linux Apache MySQL PHP. And we'll talk more about what that stands for. But for right now, just take my word for it, that that's a very common, very popular type of web application server. So we pick that option, let's keep scrolling down. And then it says, we're going to need to connect to the server instance with what they call the SSH key pair. So you're, remember, you're sitting at your computer, this server is running across the internet in the cloud, just like in the good old days, you'd have to have a keyboard connection that you could type commands back and forth. And so that's what SSH does. It stands for Secure Shell, and it's the industry standard for how you connect to a cloud server. So I'm going to make a special SSH key pair to demonstrate how you would do that. Your SSH key pair is just as important as your username and password. If somebody has your uh, key pair, they can connect to your server. And once they're on your server, they can scrape your data, they can delete your content, they can do anything that you could do if you had uh, access to the keyboard of a, a big server. So I'm going to create a new uh, key pair. Whoops, sorry, create new. And I'm going to give it a name. So RVU key pair, generate key pair. This name can be anything you want. You just have to remember what it is so you can find it later. Generate key pair. And then it tells you your key pair has been successfully created. Download your private key now. 
and you can only download this private key file right now. So once you download it, the option to download it again is never available. So when you download it, you need to keep track of it. We're going to do download key. We're going to do save file. And what it does on the Mac is it copies it into your downloads uh, folder. So you can see I've got another key pair in there. We've got this one here that we call RVU key pair dot PEM. That's the key pair file. That's what you have to keep track of. If someone gets on your computer or you email that key pair to somebody, they will have full access to the server that you create here in the cloud. And since you probably are going to create multiple servers with the same key pair, potentially they'll be able to access all your servers and do their uh, bad things with them. So we need to keep track of all these things. All right. Then it says, now that you've got your key pair, what kind of server do you want? So it's giving you a handful of server types ranging from $3 a month up to $160 a month. So you get a sense here of what these servers are capable of, you know, how much RAM they have, how many CPUs. Any of these servers are um, fairly capable. The lower ones are for more introductory type scenarios where you don't have that much traffic. The high-end ones can handle quite a bit of traffic and have you know, hundreds of gigabytes of space. So for this exercise, we're going to just start up ourselves with a $5 a month server. We're not actually going to have to even pay $5 because you can just delete it later. Um, so this is just a practice server. So maybe it runs for a couple of days and costs, you know, 50 cents. So don't worry about it too much. Just remember to delete it later if you're not actually using it. So we're going to call this uh, a unique name here in the identify your instance box. So call this RVU LAMP PHP 7.1. You can call it pretty much whatever you want. So now that we've got that, we could tag this server with some additional content. We'll skip that for now. We can double check. We've got a $5 server. We've got a certain name. We've got a certain key pair. And we chose LAMP PHP 7 Linux. And we're in Oregon Zone A. So after we're happy with all that, we'll do Create Instance. All right. So you can see here that AWS has started creating this virtual machine. Just like it took about 10 minutes to create those virtual machines from those OVF files in VMware Fusion. And in VirtualBox, it takes you know, five to 10 minutes to do the same thing, because essentially they're doing the same thing you were doing when you were clicking around inside your VirtualBox or inside your uh, VMware Fusion. So we have to be patient here. I'm going to guess it's going to take five minutes. Right now it's 9.28. I'm going to stop the video, and we'll come back when it's done. All right. It's still only 929, so about one minute. Now, if you look here, it says that the RVU LAMP PHP 7.1 server is running. So that's good news. But I'm going to caution you that even though it's running, what that really means is that it's turned on, but it hasn't actually started all the way yet. It's kind of like how a computer has to boot up, and even though the computer is on and running, it's not really ready to do anything. So Let's just bear that in mind. You can see here that now that it's running, you have some commands. You can connect to it, manage, stop, reboot, delete it. And they even give you a little uh, command prompt icon. So what happens here is that Amazon's trying to be helpful, and it's giving you access to the server through this very simplified light sale interface, which is really friendly. So if we click here on this command prompt icon, it's going to bring up a window that's a lot like our um, Windows or Mac terminal. Now you see here, and that's what I was setting you up for, is that it says login failed. And the reason for that is, is the instance has just started up. And it says try again in a minute or two. So I know from just doing this same exercise a little while ago that this process actually takes five minutes or so, I would say, for this command line um, option to work. So if you get that error message, it's not that you're doing something wrong. It's that Amazon and LightSail aren't terribly clear about what's going on, and they're a little bit um, exaggerating what the server is doing uh, versus where you would like it to be. So this is a good time, however, to take a little segue and show you how to connect to the server uh, without using this kind of uh, training wheels tool of the web browser terminal. So instead, we're going to use our Mac OS's terminal, which is working and probably um, can be used. So if you click on your terminal, 
it takes you to your um, command prompt in the Mac uh, land and use the command PWD to see what directory we're in. That stands for present working directory. So right now I'm in my GM Webster uh, folder. Now I downloaded that PEM file to the downloads folder. You can see that here that it's right there. So I'm not in the right folder to really do this manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change directory or CD to the downloads folder. And I can do a, a list and I can see the stuff that's in there. So I'm interested in the RVU keypair.pem file. And I know what I need to do is I need to run the SSH command and feed it that file. And I also need to um, give it this IP address. Now you remember we use IP addresses to identify our server. So I can use that 54.187.169.198 address to connect to the server using this SSH protocol. So I'll try to position my windows so you can see pretty well. All right, so the syntax of the command is not that bad. So it's SSH-I, and then you would put in RVU-Kiwi-Pair.PM, right? That stands for your identity file. And then you would use the rest of the command, which is a username at an IP address. So I know from my reading of the documentation for Bitnami that I have to use the username Bitnami at 54.187.169.198. And just heads up, this command isn't going to totally work, so I'll explain why in a second. Okay. So are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes. OK. So warning, unprotected private key file. So this is the computer telling you that the current permissions on the key file are not acceptable because the key file is accessible by people other than the original user. So the key file has permissions um, read and write for the original owner the group, and the rest of the others. So it will not accept that key file as it's been downloaded. So that can be fixed by this command chmod, which is to change the permissions on the key file. So I'm going to change that so only the um, owner can read the file. So I'm going to do chmod 400 rvu key pair dot pm. Right? Okay, so I like that. So now I'm going to use my up arrow and I'm going to go back. I'm going to try it again. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to work this time. Okay, look, it's worked. I now have a command prompt on this server that we just started. So you can see Bitnami LAMP 7.4. Okay, so this is really the main deliverable of this module. I hope I think it's been about 10 minutes, so we'll stop before we go too far. But the idea was, how do we use AWS to launch a virtual server and then connect to it? Because what good is a server without it being launched and without being able to connect to it? And as you saw, it's not the most obvious thing that you do to connect to a server. Um, there is a little bit of what we'll call command prompt silliness that you have to get through if you want to connect to it directly from your Mac. So I wanted to show you how to do that. There's other articles on the internet you could have read to do that, but no one really wants to do that at this level. They just want it to work. And so we went through all that to do that, but now we'll probably get a click on this command prompt here and it'll probably work because it's been five minutes and everything has had a chance to settle down. And look, it looks just like what I did through the Mac. And you say, well, why didn't we just wait? Why didn't you just pause the video? We could have done it that way. Um, but then you would have been stuck using the command shell from inside the AWS user interface versus using it from your native computer. So in the long run, yes, you know, it would have been easier to do it the baby steps way, training wheels way, whatever you want to call it. And you would have been able to see the command prompt and you would have called it a success, which it is. But this is actually the more a uh, robust way of doing it, because that means that you can sit down at any computer that has a command prompt um, and connect to the server as long as you know the PEM file or have access to the PEM file and you have access to the IP address. And in the long run, I want you to get from 
here to here. It's a little bit more work. Yes, it's annoying. I understand all that. But just like you have to understand all the, you know, the ter medical terms in Latin and you have to go through all the, you know, um, osteopathic manipulation, even though it's kind of annoying sometimes, it's the same thing in any other discipline. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to build on this concept in our next video.